Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery and I've already got the system that we're going to be feeding out here on my bench. I just thought I would show a slightly larger view of the entire corner of my worm room here. Showing where that bin actually normally sits. It's right over there, that vacant spot on the little shelf that I created. And everything that's older is to the left and everything that's younger is to the right. And you might notice there's a little pattern here. Everything that's older is covered in only paper, newspaper coverings. Everything that's younger has plastic coverings, and at the moment, the 80-day-old Red Wiggler worm bin that we're working on today is still covered with plastic, but that could change gradually as we've been checking in on systems and noticing that perhaps the moisture levels are becoming a bit higher than we want them to. We've been removing the plastic. Now, the purpose of the plastic is just to help keep moisture down within the system in case there's concerns about the system possibly losing its moisture too quickly to evaporation but now that the summer months are starting to roll in I mean it's still spring but moisture is starting to show up in the air a lot more the furnace is running less and less with less tendency to dry out the air so I am prepared if need be to remove the plastic coverings from this system too today if we find that things are starting to get a little bit wet but we'll see when we get in there really quick before we get in here though um, as I mentioned the system's 80 days of age now with red wigglers living in there. There's been six feedings, but the last four feedings have been positioned in the corners. We've been going around clockwise. So the last four of those were pocket feedings or corner feedings. And 12 days have passed since the last time we checked in here and gave them a feeding. So I believe that they're gonna be due for a feeding. I do remember that the system had a top covering that I had, acci I had accidentally um, stuck my finger through <laughs> the last time we were in here. And even though it was holding together pretty good still, I thought that perhaps if it was showing some significant signs of wear today, we might be able to swap it out. And sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell if these are castings that are left on top of the paper, or is the paper actually gone and we're just... Yeah, I think that's really the case. The worms have been nibbling on this paper considerably. I think we'll just see if we can evict some of these little guys, get them off the paper. And then the paper will come back in as simply supplemental bedding to go in with today's feeding. And then I'll try to round up another sheet of newspaper we can deploy as the replacement top covering. There was also a feeding zone indicator out here, a coffee filter showing us where we fed last in whichever corner it was that we fed in. <laughs> but I don't see any signs of it. I wonder if it could have just been stuck to the paper and I just lifted it up. I don't recall exactly, but let's see if we can do a little deductive reasoning here. I believe I started here, feeding number one and two, three and four. So if I'm not mistaken, the last feeding was right there. And there's no signs of anything resembling a feeding zone indicator. So um, I've got a replacement that we can deploy. Um, and that'll be over here. We're going to be now starting into the second loop around the system. This is the, this is the corner that we're going to feed in. So why don't we just put this here as a slight reminder but we'll get back to this in a moment we'll do a kind of a backwards track through where we last fed and then where we fed previous to that so on and so forth until we get back to the corner that we intend to feed in it's kind of funny over the last couple feedings this edge of the bin has been kind of vacant not a lot of worm activity it seemed like there was worms a lot lots and lots of worms over there still kind of trying to work down what remained of the um previous few feedings but over here is where we last fed and there was just a variety of different yummy um, frozen veggies thrown in here along with a couple soiled napkins or paper towels or whatever they were and I believe we're already seeing the signs of a red napkin as well as um, I guess perhaps a white napkin or perhaps, a, perhaps it's a paper towel so some of the bedding materials that we used last time are still showing up down in here in the feeding zone and a fair number of worms coming out to partake in the food that was put in here but it wasn't the type of stuff that you would really expect to see a lot of leftovers of so well I expected to see worms hanging out here polishing off what might still remain of the last feeding um, there's really only bedding I think remaining from the previous feeding and a good bit of moisture and a bunch of worms. Here's the half of a 
mango seed. I think I saw the other half of that mango seed floating around in here last time. I think perhaps potato might have been part of the last feeding because some of this stuff looks like perhaps the skins of potato or something. I'm really not totally sure what it was that we fed last time, but um, it doesn't matter so much. It's just always kind of fun to pop, pop your head in and see how things are progressing in the previous feeding zones and make sure things are just happy and healthy, but I don't think it's necessary to continue disturbing these little guys. It's just, a, it's just that this bedding material here seems like are the other worms going to really have any interest in this bedding material down here in the old feeding zone with no more food remaining there? I mean, it would be a little bit um, more practical to maybe bring this bedding over, at least some of it, to be included with their feeding this time. Or should we just kind of stick to uh, the idea that whatever was placed into that corner during that last feeding 12 days ago should just remain in that corner and whatever becomes of it will be its fate. So yeah, why don't we just stick to the, the typical idea that we've been following, which is to simply return everything that we pulled out of any particular feeding zone back to where it was taken from and any other leftovers from feedings gone by. And hopefully the worms will be able to make some use out of that over there. And it's, you know, even though it's classified as quote unquote bedding, it is really eventually all going to become food from the point of view of the worms. So let's um let's continue. The material is, by the way, kind of damp. So assessing the moisture in here, I believe, is going to be part of the um, game plan here today. So here's that um that other half of that mango seed. It's already fallen apart into its two halves here. Um, I believe last time we checked in here, I did kind of um, notice that it was still holding together as a single piece, but not anymore. So this is going back two feedings now, and yeah, it looks like the worms are out here in pretty good numbers. Perhaps they um, had some slightly slower foods that needed to be broken broken down over in this corner that needed some more attention. So it almost does seem to me like there's more worms hanging out in the feeding zone from two times ago. Or maybe they came over and gobbled up what was given to them fresh and then they came back over here to work on some stuff that was still getting broken down. It's amazing to see that stuff that was put in here um, two feedings ago, which was a big, moldy, hard roll, is still showing up here. So these are all just these white or, you know, light color fragments of leftover or leftovers of moldy bread which last time 12 days ago was still showing up in in great amounts as leftovers so maybe perhaps it just hadn't gotten to the point where the worms were all that interested in it yet but it does seem like they're very interested in it now and perhaps that means the next time we come back into that corner we won't see much of it remaining but you never know never know what these worms different foods just seem to take a different amount of time to get to the point where worms can really make use of it as a meal so I'm not quite sure what to expect we'll see you next time and now on to the opposite edge of the bin where we're now going back three feedings ago here's the stem of a banana and let's see what else we spot down here once again I'm feeling a fair amount of moisture but nothing seems like it's too muddy or clumpy so it's not really causing me much concern I mean a system that's less than 100 days of age like this one I think can still really make good use of a fairly high level of moisture but I'm also kind of noticing how there's so little bedding left anywhere it almost seems like everything that these little wormies were probably given as bedding and food has almost all been transformed into castings here I mean yeah you see little scraps of food and bedding bits here and there but it does almost seem like these worms could use a good healthy dose of bedding so I don't know I'm debating on how to play the whole top covering idea at the end because I do have leaves you know sometimes I just lay out a bunch of leaves instead of newspaper or both you know whatever we'll see how the mood strikes me when we um <laughs> when we get there so this here I mean this feeding zone goes back four feedings now and it's still so darn busy so many worms hanging out here 
You would think that this feeding would have been depleted by now. If anything, that would cause worms to be of such interest that there's going to be so many of them here in this corner. I mean, I don't see anything that resembles leftovers, really. Just a big mob scene of worms hanging out. Every corner seems like it had a pretty good turnout of worms. Somehow it was just the, the most recently fed corner that seemed like it was the least populated. But there was really, really very little in terms of leftovers. Perhaps they just moved in briefly, gobbled up some of those really easy to eat frozen veggies and fruits or whatever it was that they got last time. And then they proceeded to wake, work their way back into the older corners where some leftovers must have remained. So, like I said earlier, I think that the best use of this uh, old top covering newspaper is to simply rest it down here as the foundation for today's feeding. I think the worms will appreciate that. It's a nice, generous amount of bedding. And then the foods that they're getting are also a nice, generous um, assortment of stuff like, um, I think this must be cauliflower, this might be celery, this might be cabbage, or lettuce, um, or savoy cabbage. Um, this is also, a, I think, cauliflower. I see some carrot. More carrot, I believe. Good assortment of stuff. And when I looked at it at first, it seemed like perhaps it would be too much, you know? Like here's the, the, the stem or the butt end, I guess, of the head of cauliflower. All these things to me appear like, even though they're kind of large, all seem like things that the worms are just going to go crazy for and they're going to burn through it in no time. So I don't think that we're going to see much of any leftovers of this stuff by the next time we get in here. But we'll see. You never know. This does seem like a pretty, fair, you know, pretty um, densely populated and fairly busy bin. So I do have confidence in their ability to burn, burn through that feeding pretty efficiently. So we're going to also help that along by putting some grit on the food that they're getting. And, um, you know, what do we have here? I do have a couple pieces of soiled paper towel here on the side. And it does feel like we should be perhaps a little bit more generous with bedding. But, you know, I think I like that idea of sprinkling the top surface of this system with a bunch of um, dry leaves. So I've got a box of dry leaves and it just hasn't been getting a whole lot of attention. Perhaps this is our opportunity to lay it out here as a nice natural top covering for the worms to come out and hang out in if they should wish to do so. And um, yeah, you know, sorry, I just noticed a little wormy over here stuck out on the plastic, somewhat stranded after I took the uh, big pile of newspaper away from there. So. Here's my, uh, here's my box of leaves, and as you can see, it's practically full. Sometimes I like to just take this stuff and sprinkle a bunch of it out onto the system, and the stuff I think will pick up a good bit of the moisture that's in this system. And that'll probably make things in here seem really nice and cozy for the, the worms. And perhaps a little less moist and a little less concerning to me that it's going to turn muddy and clumpy and unmanageable so I think that this is a good way to go so why don't we leave it at that we're gonna skip trying to drape out newspaper top coverings we'll just let the worms hang out in this stuff here and by being covered with the the nice plastic top covering it should help hydrate that top layer of material within a few days and then the worms will start coming out here to hang out and enjoy it and and then perhaps the next time we come in here, we can incorporate that stuff as bedding into the next feeding too. That should be kind of nice as well. So back on with our nice ornate cover from the system that these worms originally came from. If you recognize it, yeah, that's from the Outdoor Worm Bag, version 5.0. <laughs> and since it is spring, it's going to be time to get a new outdoor worm system started soon. So um i've got a couple things to take care of getting cleaned up and put away here but i'm not going to waste your time with that that's boring before i go really quick let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now